Who of you have been involved with the Foundation SIG? Just raise your hands. Okay, so a few of you. Who knows what Heltata is? Okay, a few of you. Well, then I'm in the right room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, so I'm, I'm not here representing CPUT today. I'm representing Heltata and specifically Foundation SIG. Um, but I am from CPT. Uh, a colleague and I are convening the SIG for 2016 and 2017 uh, from CPT. So, yeah. Okay, so what is Health Data? <laughs> it's the, okay, it's the Higher, Higher Education, Learning and Teaching Association of Southern Africa, not just South Africa. So that includes um, our other partners close by, uh, Namibia, and so forth. And it's a professional association for educators and other significant role players in the tertiary education in South Africa. Okay, its membership is drawn mainly from staff in higher education institutions, but it seeks to work collaboratively with policymakers, statutory bodies, and other professional associations with an interest in higher education, and that includes the DHE, um, uh, CHE, and uh, the Department of Higher Education and Training. And I'm, I'm, I try to get everyone's uh, logos in there, so have you recognized yours? Am I missing any? Yes. Oh, I am. Uh, is Unibu not there? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Looks like everyone's leaving Unibu out of the room. <laughs> I'll add it. I'll add it. Please forgive me. I try to find all of them. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the mission, just quickly, the mission and vision of Health Data is to promote um, quality in higher education practice through the creation of a synergistic network, a network of of those of us who are academics to connect, to collaborate, to chat, and so forth, and uh, the professionalization of higher education practitioners in Southern Africa. Okay, so um, at the institutional level, within and across institutions, Haltasa seeks to promote networking between staff in central units responsible for enhancing educational quality and faculty-based academic staff with a scholarly interest in teaching and learning. So the focus is teaching and learning. It seeks to extend this network, working through linking up with and promoting the establishment of professional networks. And the main forum that Altata uses to do this usually is, is its annual conference, which is taking place in Cape Town this year, uh, but also through special interest groups that provide further opportunities for constructive engagement and collaboration. And some of these special interest groups include things like action research. If you're interested in action research, you can join that SIG. If you're interested in uh, first year experience, you can join that SIG. Uh, academic development, there's even a TAL SIG, teach, uh, Technology Enhanced Learning. And if you want to um, uh, suggest a new SIG, you can write a proposal which suggests a new SIG to Altasa. And you can get more information about the SIGs at Altasa's website, altasa.org.za. All right, so let's chat about the Foundation SIG, because that's what we're here to talk about. So the Foundation SIG brings together academic lecturers and academic and staff developers with an interest and experience in working in the many foundational and extended curriculum provisions across the different higher education institutions in South Africa to share knowledge, research, and innovative teaching and learning practices. Okay, so at the moment, the SIG is being convened by a CPUT last year at Altata. We um, decided that we're going to, from now on, instead of giving the convenership to a person, we're going to be giving it to an institution each year, something just like we've done now, where we give the colloquium to an institution, and then whoever is involved in ECP at that institution can then help support running that SIG, just like I'm sure a lot of people will be helping to run the colloquium next year. At the moment, the two main conveners at CPT are myself, Dylan Cromart, and a colleague of mine, Dr. Lynn Coleman, maybe some of you know her. All right, so the strategy for this year is primarily based on knowledge sharing. 
So for the next few years, we want to stimulate and promote a culture of practice sharing amongst institutional partners. Such practices sharing initiatives should operate at individual institutions and uh, departmental and faculty level, and then should also traverse regional and national as well as international levels. The idea is to encourage ETP units and staff at different institutions to create practice sharing platforms and also between their regional partners. So uh, just in diagram form, it looks as follows. Uh, on an institutional level, we would like to encourage best practice sharing. I don't know if best practice sharing takes place at your institutions amongst ETP practitioners. Um, we would like to encourage more of that. And then also at a regional level um, with things like regional symposia, as well as at a national level at places like this colloquium and conferences, and then eventually at an international level. Now, the strategy has two key elements, namely a face-to-face -face element as well as a digital element. And I'll be discussing those two key strategies uh, in the next section of the presentation. Okay, so before I get to that, the strategy mainly focuses on practice sharing. And common ways in which such practice sharing can take place is through practice sharing circles, which I'll explain in a bit more detail later, the hosting of regional seminars and symposia or colloquia. In addition, an online knowledge sharing platform has been created to facilitate national internal benchmarking in order to identify, capture and leverage best practice knowledge in ECP provisions. All right, so the hope is that by leveraging the work of educators and researchers in the field of ECP provisions and making it readily available to the broader ECP community, the greater purpose of ECB will be more effectively achieved on a national and institutional level. So, the face-to-face -face strategy, what is it all about? Okay, so seminars and workshops are a key way of um, facilitating face-to-face -face knowledge sharing as, uh, with the use of structured presentations uh, delivered by invited guests, highlighting innovative teaching and learning strategies and their approaches and interventions to teaching, really, in the classroom, which is what we've been doing here in, to some degree, although mostly this is more of a research-based forum. Uh, seminars are generally more practice-centered. What do you do in the classroom and how does it work? Okay, the, the, uh, the focus is placed more on the theorized practice and in also looking at the theoretical lens that underpins what is done in the classroom. And at CPUT, for example, we have sought to develop relationships with regional partners and invite them to facilitate such seminars at our institution. And here are a few real pictures from some of our uh, regional seminars. Another one is something called a classroom fika. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know what that is, a fika is a concept in the Swedish culture with a basic meaning of to have coffee. And it often is accompanied with pastries or sandwiches. So what we do is we just have coffee together and we usually have someone to share a basic presentation about what they've been doing in their classroom and then we chat over coffee and sandwiches about, uh, about it and about how, how what we've experienced. And it's a very nice informal setting and this is a, um, an advert from one of the fikas that happened at two campuses in, at CPT. And you can see that it's about taking student, tra sorry, tracking student performance in nature conservation. <coughs> And it's a great informal space to discuss general issues and so forth, like I've just mentioned. Okay, then at a regional level, um, you, we've also done workshops and seminars, and this we'd like to encourage as well. In the Western Cape, we sought to facilitate workshops to encourage discussion and practical application of theories you know, to our teaching and learning contexts. So last year, we had a social justice ECP workshop as part of our regional collaboration where these two uh, academics, Brenda Libovitz and Viv Bozilak, shared about their recent paper on the topic of social justice. And then after, th after they did their presentation about their paper, we broke up into groups and workshopped and discussed how it applies to our individual contexts and uh, teaching, teaching and learning contexts. Okay, then another regional example of face-to-face -face engagement is uh, symposia. This is an example of this year's 
uh, Inter-Institutional Extended Curriculum Symposium we had last week in the Western Cape, which was hosted by these four universities, or at least these four universities participated, but it was hosted by CPUT. And um, at the symposium, we have regular parallel presentations, and we um, and this year we experimented with a new method for practice sharing called practice sharing circles, which I again will mention or will share about a bit more later. Okay, then on a national level, we obviously have uh, each uh, an institution has the opportunity to host the colloquium, and this is the image from this year's colloquium here at. CUT, by the way, well done, CUT. You've done a great job. Uh, we appreciate what you've been doing. There we go. <laughs> right, so at this, event, this type of event, all the ECP researchers and educators are invited to present their research. In the future, we hope to also facilitate practice sharing circles at the colloquia. So, DT, uh, if we can chat sometime about facilitating that at next year's colloquia, that would be great. Um, as well as, obviously, maybe even pre-conference pre workshop sessions would also be a great idea. Um, so we, we'll chat about that. Um, as for the, on an international level, there's the yearly um, Health Tasa Conference, which invites participants from all over the Southern Hemisphere to do presentations. And for researchers, um, education practitioners, people who are involved in policy and so forth, who do presentations. And at the, at the conference, from a Foundation SIG perspective, with each, each year at the conference, there's a special SIG slot for all the SIGs to get together. It's about two to three hours. And at this year's SIG slot in Cape Town, we want to um, run a special, uh, sorry, a, sh a practice sharing session. Um, and I'll explain a bit more later what that's about. And we also want to host a pre-conference workshop. Possibly, well, not this year, we'll probably host one next year, a pre-conference workshop specifically related to ECP. And then also, obviously, there are people who do specific parallel presentations, poster presentations, specifically connected to ECP provisions. Okay, so that was the face-to-face -face strategy. Now we're going to just quickly chat about the digital strategy, which I'm quite excited about. Um, it's a bit of my history of digital marketing and so forth, so um, I hope to use those skills to support the ECP community in South Africa. Okay, so on an institutional level, um, we would like to encourage extended program facilitators to run blogs that share what is happening in the ECP community within the institutions. I don't know, just show of hands, um, at your institution, is there an ECP blog that is managed? No. Okay. Well. That's something we'd like to encourage ECP coordinators to do, to create an awareness of what ECP is doing in your institution. ECP is often looked at as the black sheep um, in the institution, in a way, a second-class citizen. But I think that if you can create awareness of what's happening in ECP, it'll, it'll lift the status um, in a way, uh, especially what the teachers are doing. Uh, ECP teachers are doing amazing stuff, but no one knows about it. <laughs> so uh, it just requires one person or two people to manage, to take a few photos and write a blog post about it. And in, in that way, you can increase the, the awareness uh, and the ECP brand, I would say. Um, so here's an example of our ECP blog uh, running at CPT, which is managed by Lynn Coleman. And she shares the work done by various ECP lecturers about the work done by, uh, sorry, about upcoming events. She notifies us of upcoming ECP-related events and also makes a range of resources available that are of interest to ECP staff in the institution. And we would like to, because we've developed, I'm going to share with you now, an, a, a Foundation SIG website for all ECP provision or for all ECP lecturers for, in the country. And we'd like to promote, if you are going to develop a blog, if you want to go back and suggest that, we would like to promote your blog on the national website for other institutions and other people to, to hear about. So let us know if you do start one. And uh, here is the front page currently of the Foundation SIG website. And uh, this is also the second part of the front page. On a regional, national and international level, we plan to use the website to facilitate practice sharing research, and just general networking <coughs> amongst ECP practitioners. The website is designed to be a hub that links all the other ECP-related activities and research in Southern Africa. 
something of a one-stop destination for all ECP practitioners. We plan to promote the regional, national, and international events on the blog, oh, sorry, on the website, as well as share research from conference presentations, papers, posters, and so forth. Right, we also have a YouTube channel where we hope to make available the conference presentations of ETP researchers. So at this year's symposium, we recorded, screencasted, the presentations of many of the presenters which we are now making available on YouTube and we'd like to facilitate and teach others like yourselves to record your presentations to make it available to the rest of the ECP community in Southern Africa because many people can't be at the presentations on the day. So in this way we can extend the conversation. Okay, so a lot of work is put into developing a quality conference presentation and yet it only, only the people in the presentation room that usually get the gain from it. At the, as the ECP community, we would like to spearhead innovation in teaching and learning in higher education in Southern Africa. For this reason, we at the Foundation SIG feel strongly to promote the recording of presentations for the benefit of the greater academic community in South Africa. In fact, we want to show South Africa that ECP is on the forefront of innovation in teaching and learning. So there are not any more the little orphan child. But in fact, we're leading teaching and learning in higher education. And the way to do that is to take what we're already doing and just make it available to others. Just show them what we're doing. That's all we need to do. All right, so the YouTube videos are linked to the blog or the website via blog posts. And then we share the details of the presenter as well as the PowerPoint presentation and the abstract of the presentation. This is an example of a presentation that I did, which I screen recorded, and you will see some of my details at the bottom there, as well as a link to the PowerPoint presentation. And just below this, which you can't see, is the abstract. And then there's an option to comment at the bottom. So anyone who wants to comment, add, ask questions, add their own insights from their own teaching and learning, can create that conversation on an online platform. Okay, so the website promotes, for those of you asking on the right-hand side here, or wondering, it promotes a Creative Commons license which means that people may use your work, but they must give you credit, they may not use it for commercial gain, and they may not make changes to the material. So that's the, common, that's the Creative Commons license that we are going to be prescribing to on this website. So if people want to use it, they have to use it exactly as it is. Okay? And I know many of you are maybe thinking, but what if I want to write a paper about it? It's just a question, how many of you actually write papers on the presentations you do at conferences? Well, how many of them do you actually write papers on? Uh, the other thing is, wouldn't it be great to get some comments about your presentation before you write the paper? So when you write the paper, you just say, Dylan, please take it down from the website, no problem. Okay? As academics, we sometimes hold our research like a baby. <laughs> but I think it's time to let it go and let it bless other people. Right? All right, so... Once, the, once up on the website, people will be able to engage with, your work, with you regarding your work by giving comments and asking questions and so forth. And in general, it will help you get your research, your work into the hands of people that can actually use it. <laughs> right? And not just at a conference presentation, but it will be there for anyone to engage with. So we want to take the conversations online where they're not bound by time and space. In order to engage in these conversations at the moment, we need to come to a colloquium, spend a lot of money and time getting here. But let's say we can't. Let's say the money is decreasing in terms of how we can. We can't always get to these things, and the money is decreasing. So maybe now we can at least still engage in these conversations if it's on an online platform. All right, then we've also got a Facebook group that we've connected. So those of you who, are, who like Facebook or just want to engage in an informal way, we've got a Facebook group up. And you're welcome to join the Facebook group um, by clicking on the link on the front page of the website, or you can type in Foundation SIG in Facebook and it will come up. And you can just join that. Then another uh, part of the strategy is to develop a Google Drive shared folder. Is anyone using Google Drive at all? Okay, those of you who don't, don't worry. It's not very difficult. Um, everything, all these technology-related things, I do little videos that show you exactly how to do it. Um, and post it up on the video. Uh, sorry, on the, on the website. So sharing best practice is intrinsically linked to sharing information. For this reason, a Google Drive account has been set up to facilitate document sharing. We would like to build a large repository of documentation for use by all foundation phase instructors and administrators. 
I think there's more documentation connected to the administration of ECP than anything else. And uh, we want to, yeah, so we want to include administrative documentation, event documentation, uh, teaching and learning documentation, so a folder which is divided by discipline. So if you're in science, then we have all the different lectures in science. ECP can make the stuff that they're developing available to the other science lectures in the country. Then we don't have to invent the wheel every single time at every institution. Why don't we build upon one another's work? And then obviously also research-based documentation. Okay, so that includes, or not concludes, that concludes the strategy, the face-to-face -face, as well as the digital uh, strategy of the Foundation SIG. And now just to end off with, I'd like to just uh, tantalize your taste buds in a way uh, regarding this new way, approach of knowledge sharing that we have started experimenting with um, as, a, yeah, as a foundation community. Um, we started, we did one recently at the symposium in Western Cape and we will also be doing it at Haltasa this year. So, when we first brainstormed ideas of how to infuse special interest, the special interest group with energy and activities that would stimulate ECP lecturers, interests um, and ECP colleagues stressed the importance of creating more authentic opportunities for practitioners to share their practices associated with ECP. However, we lamented about how the structure of conferences and seminars that place the presenter at the center of attention tended to encourage mostly one-way conversation and rarely stimulated real dialogue. I'm sure you've all experienced that. Just right, like right now, there's not much dialogue happening. I'm talking and you're listening to me. <laughs> Which is kind of maybe how your students feel sometimes. I don't know if you've included more dialogue in your teaching. So we thought, what if we could use these conference slots but deconstruct how practice sharing took place so that more participation, dialogue, and mutual understanding and conversation could be encouraged. Therefore, the Foundation Special Interest Group is introducing a new way for ECP practitioners to connect and engage in some authentic discussions about their teaching and learning practice, something we call practice sharing circles. So essentially, the practice sharing circles are an attempt to ensure that within the formal conference and seminar environments, we can create settings that aims to be Le uh, sorry, it aims to be a less formal space that encourages deep and authentic conversation between academic practitioners about the academic practice. And this, and this is an example, uh, a picture from our recent practice sharing sessions at the regional symposium. And all the pictures that you'll see from now on come from the symposium. Okay, so how, how do practice sharing circles work? Well, um, they are organized to organic, or, organically and intuitively encourage participation and dialogue. So number one, all participants sit around a table together like this. A presenter will then share a short practice of their own using notes or a laptop. And sometimes they'll even give handouts. This serves as a catalyst for conversation amongst the circle members. Other participants can then add to the conversation by asking questions, sharing about their own practices, contexts, and so forth. Okay, some of the benefits of practice sharing circles that we have found is that they're informal. Also, they are dialogic in nature, encouraging both dialogue and listening. Almost like colleagues around the table having a conversation. Also, the presenter and the participants are engaging as equals across the table. There's not one person here who's the specialist, and everyone down there is the non-specialists. We're equals engaging. So here you can see the presenter on the left-hand side, and I've showed you other pictures of how she's just one of the table members. She's just creating a catalyst for conversation. So, if you are coming to Altasa, look out for the practice sharing circles at this year's Altasa conference in Cape Town. And that's it from me. Thank you very much. <laughs>